Uh, just over five years ago, um, my husband was seriously ill in hospital and my 21-year-old daughter um, came down with some bug which the doctors misdiagnosed as glandular fever and a week later she died. I hit rock bottom. I didn't know what I was doing, I wasn't functioning, um, I couldn't even remember whether I'd put clean clothes on in the morning. I would get up, get showered and I'd be standing there thinking, are these clothes clean? So people took over and the kindness and the generosity that they showed is unbelievable. For a fortnight, people fed us. They came after hospital visiting each night and provided meals. One of the young people who was trained to be a doctor took it upon herself to ring me every day. What have you eaten? Have you eaten? When you put the phone down, go into the kitchen, make yourself a sandwich. And she guided me through a period where I felt I hadn't just hit the bottom. I was actually in a river clinging on by my fingernails, uh, likely to be swept away. I just didn't know how to cope. And to make things a thousand times worse, when we had to arrange the funeral, the undertaker suddenly announced he needed a thousand pound up front. Well, 966 pound it was. And at that time, my bank balance was less than zero. So to say I was worried would be a slight understatement. And at the same time, I got a phone call from one of the pastors who said, Margaret, we'll give you a donation towards the funeral, which was some relief, but I still thought it's not enough. And I had to ring a member of the family, my brother, and say, can I borrow some money? And he said, I will give you some money. And he gave me the £1,000 to cover the immediate outgoings. And over the next fortnight, various people would come. Again, a lot of them I hardly knew, and handed in envelopes. And a lot of the envelopes were condolence cards, but inside the card there would be cash. And... In the course of three weeks, the cost of the entire funeral was covered. I didn't have to put anything to it at all. And I had change. Um, two other ladies, um, Boomy and Evelyn, undertook the catering for the funeral, so I didn't have to think about that. Because as I say at the time, I wasn't thinking straight. I couldn't think straight. If it wasn't for the help of those people, I don't know where I would have been. It was only months later that the doctor confided on in me that I'd actually had post-traumatic stress disorder. It's possibly the worst thing you can say to a grieving parent is you'll get over it because you don't and you can't. You know that you're going to live with that for the rest of your life, that there's no easy answer and a platitude isn't going to help. But the other people that were there helping, they knew there were practical ways of doing it. And they showed that help and they showed that love. There's one lady who rang up one morning and said, have you done any housework this week? Well, I laughed. <laughs> it was the last thing on my mind, housework. And she came down and she brought a bag of goodies. This was a really useful bag. It was washing up liquid and new dishcloths and dusters and anti-back spray and she set on and she cleaned the kitchen and the bathroom and she hoovered right through and things like that. It seems in many ways perhaps trivial, but it was things like that that carried me through that time because I couldn't function and I couldn't do these things on my own. Generosity, people think of giving money or things like that. It isn't necessarily money, it is time, it is care, it is love. It's showing people that you are there for them, that you can support them, whatever their problem.